Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play your PS5 from your Steam Deck so convert your Steam Deck into a PS portal but be able to actually play your PC games as well I've been playing Fallout 4's new next-gen update on PS5 and as you can see now I'm basically streaming it at 60fps to my Steam Deck and the PS5 is all the way across the house so how do we do this? Let's get started and I'll show you. So once you're on your PS5, top right corner to settings, go to network and make sure that your PS5 is connected to the same router as your Steam Deck via Wi-Fi or via Ethernet cable if you want a more stable connection. Then you need to go into system, remote play at the bottom left corner and make sure that remote play is indeed enabled. And you'll see one of the options called link device. We'll need it for later. So when you open it, you have 300 seconds to use that code, which you will need on your Steam Deck. So go back to the previous menu and let's continue on the Steam Deck with that setup. Press on the Steam button, power, and go to the desktop. You'll also need your PSN account ID Base64. There was a website that you just put your name, your PlayStation Network name, but it's down. So there is two other ways to do it. One is the manual way. I'll leave the link for this in the description where you log in with your account and well, with a Python command, you can get it back or you can do it an easier way and enter to this one. Again, if you don't trust this one, use the manual one. I do it for ease of use sake, but you never know. So if you don't trust it, just use the manual one I left in the description as well. So enter to this website, copy this URL, open it. And once you open it, this is to request your data basically. So enter with your PSN ID. If you were successful, you'll have a web page called redirect. So copy the URL. So Copy, go back to Trinket and paste the URL. You can also do it with the trackpad, it's not a, not a problem. Once you do that, hit enter. And after you hit enter, you have a lot of text. And at the bottom, it says, this is your account ID. So write this down. It's super important for later. So feel free to write it down, your own. Do not share this code with anybody, please. That's why I'm hiding mine. So once you're in desktop mode, go into the Discover store and you need to look up Chiaki for deck. So type it up. Chiaki for deck, like this. Remember to that the Steam key plus X brings up the on-screen keyboard. If you need it, I'm using a keyboard at the moment to make it easier for me. Create open source, PlayStation Remote Play, modify for Steam Deck, install. Let's wait for the download to finish. All right, so once the download finishes, close the store, go to the start menu, go into games, Chiaki for Deck, open that up. And you'll have this user interface. This just happens to be my PlayStation 5. So it'll discover if a PS5 is on your network automatically. Make sure, again, as I said before, that they are on the same Wi-Fi and it's 5 gigahertz. So now we want to create a Steam shortcut to be able to access from gaming mode. So create a shortcut. Let's call this PS Remote Play. We hit Enter. We select Create. Okay, so here's all the details. We close Chiaki for deck and we go back to gaming mode. So one sec. We're back in gaming mode. So go to the Steam menu or press the button. Library, non-Steam. You'll probably start here, go to non-Steam and you have it right here. This is the one. It's a little bit confusing because of the logo, but there we go. It created a non-Steam version, select play. Oh, before selecting play, go into the controls and we need to map something. Make sure that the back grip buttons, one of them is mapped to the escape key. So go here, select the escape key or other keys if you want to use that. Hit play. This will launch the software for the first time. 
it might take a few seconds, so be patient. Okay, that's my PS5 that is on my same network. So once you do that, you're in here, go into this cog at the top right corner. So here you got whatever you need. PS5 features, adaptive triggers. So if you connect a PS5 controller, you can have that. On video, select 1080p, 720p. In this case, 1080p, so we have some app sample thing. 60fps, bitrate. In my case, since I have a very good local connection, I'm at 50,000, which is 50 megabits per second, very high quality. So if this is too high, you have a lot of stutters and issues. Make sure you're on a 5 gigahertz connection on Wi-Fi or a cable. H.265, H.264 or H.265 HDR. H.265 with a lower bitrate, so a lower number here, provides better quality than H.264. Plus, it supports HDR. So if you have a Steam Deck OLED, this is perfect. You have great color accuracy. Hardware decoder, use BAAPI, window type, select the resolution, and the preset, if you want less latency, use fast, but it will look worse. But again, if you don't have a good connection, use 50,000. This is for local Wi-Fi, so as long as you have a 5 gigahertz router, you should be okay. Audio slash Wi-Fi, everything like you see here. Consoles, we are going to register a new one. And keys, this is super important. Make sure that the PS button is mapped to the escape key, which in our case is mapped to the back button. Otherwise, you don't, won't be able to go back to the PS5's menu. You won't have a PS button. And you can also map the back buttons for F, for example, to have a share button. But otherwise, it works as you would expect. Also, the touchpad on the Steam Deck acts like the PS5's trackpad. So after that's done, go back into the main menu. You'll see your PS5 if it's connected to the same network. So here's mine. So it discovered it automatically. That's what should happen. Mine happens to be on rest mode. All right, so once that's done, you put the, the host, it's automatically because it detects it on the Wi-Fi, your PSN account ID that I showed you how to get, and the remote play pin that I also showed you at the beginning how to get. Make sure you choose PS5. If you're on PlayStation 4, you can also do this. Select at the top right, register, and the state here will be ready. So double click or use your finger to get into the PS5, and we're in. So as you can probably notice, there is um, black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. That's because, well, the PS5 is 16 by 9. So it's, and the Steam Deck is 16 by 10. So you cannot fix that. It's basically a fixed resolution from the console. So let's get into some games. Welcome to Bloodborne on the Steam Deck stream from a PS5. As you can see, the battery life is basically four hours on a, on a full charge, which is way more, of course, than playing a game natively on Steam Deck. The frame times are weird, but that's just manga hood being weird because we are not actually seeing the game's performance here. But it looks good. Especially if you have an OLED Steam Deck and you enable HDR, man, it will look way better than the PlayStation Portal. So what's the advantage of this over the PS Portal? Well, you have full control of which streaming codec you're using, H.264 or H.265. So why is that a good thing? Well, if you have a bad connection, you can use H2... Sorry, H.265. And you have a lower bitrate, but you can get good quality and HDR. Then if you have a good connection, you can actually do higher bitrates, HDR, and it'll look great. You can also do this over the internet but it requires port forwarding on your router and some extra setup. I left a link in the description on how to do it, if you're interested. But if you don't have a good connection, I mean, if you're using, I don't know, data from your phone shared to your Steam Deck, it will basically be unplayable. So my advice is to do it at home. Maybe, I don't know, you don't want to use your TV, you'd rather use your Steam Deck, you get it on, on your hands. Also, you can press both bumpers and both sticks at the same time. 
to bring up this menu and I'll show you which quality you're using. In this case, high quality. You can stretch it to fit the entire screen or you can enable the mic. It also shows you how much data it's using, the IP of your PS5, all that good data. If you press it again, it's back. Also, if you lose control and you don't see any button mapping, press twice on the three buttons and you should regain control of your PS5. So for some reason, sometimes the gamepad disables itself. So again, just press this twice and you'll have it. And since we map the PS button to the back of the one of the buttons on the back, you press it and you're back on the PS5's menu. So one of my favorites, God of War 3 Remastered. So you can see open, close games, you can start downloads, you can do basically whatever you want. It's like you have the PS5 on a PS portal. Of course, there is a tiny bit of latency when it comes to the controls, but it's very low compared to what I'm used to when I played this on my phone, as an example, because you can also do it with the official PlayStation app on your phone. If you plug in a controller, it works pretty well. So I'm pretty impressed. And this was made by the community. So <laughs> imagine that there's no official Linux app for this. So it works fantastically well. And it supports HDR. So if you have an OLED Steam Deck, man, that would look incredible. Just make sure to have HDR enabled on your PS5 as well. So third try is the charm. Okay. We are back, so the PS5 was initializing, that's why we couldn't get into it before. And we're straight back into the game. So after you wake up the PS5, wait a few seconds and try to access again. And we're back into the game the way that we left it. And again, you can do basically whatever you want from here. And it feels just like having a PS5 on your hands without just paying for a device like the PS Portal that only streams PS5, well, you can play games on this, you can stream the PS5, you can do basically whatever you want. So I think this is a better option. And you can also connect a PS5 controller to the Steam Deck, it will work just fine. You also have haptics. So it's a complete package. I don't think <laughs> it gets any better than this. And it looks incredible. I mean, it feels like playing on native hardware. Just make sure that you're connected to the 5 GHz connection, otherwise you'll have a bad experience. The game will be laggy. So if you experience any lag or anything like that, that's not an issue. You can put the PS5 on rest mode. So we're back into the menu that we were before. So if you need to do any adjustments, just go back to this menu to the cog and in the video make sure to lower the bitrate so in my in my case i have a good local connection so i can do very high numbers but if we use the default 15000 and hit enter we'll basically go into lower the amount of data that we're using to do the video stream so I wait, I'm waking up the PS5, I'll give it a few seconds. So this works with H.265, actually looks pretty good even at this lower bitrate. So if you don't have a 5 gigahertz option on your Wi-Fi, you only have 2.4 gigahertz, which is much slower. You can actually lower the bitrate, put H.265, and it looks great still. You can see the pixelation out there, but it still works. The audio is fine. The game looks good, and the responsiveness is completely fine. I would say it feels better than the official app when it comes to latency and quality, so... Great job, developer. <laughs> so yeah, that's how you do it. You can play all your PS5 on your local Wi-Fi connection. If you open the ports on your router, you can do it online. There's a separate video on that from another YouTuber, so check that out in the description. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys, thanks for watching.